her mother, Philippa of Lancaster, are portrayed above the Annunciation as sibyls and counterparts to the prophets Zacharias and Micah. Similar to the Fountain of Life replicas, the Ghent altar piece displays a heavenly deesis when opened, but its lower interior section presents a more complex arrangement of figures than the contrasting clusters of the church and synagogue. The centerpiece Adoration of the Lamb includes Judaic prophets and pagan authors, apostles garbed in Franciscan habits, diverse bishops, cardinals, popes, and virgin martyrs, all processed towards the altar and fountain of grace. While the two right-wing panels present a tribute to the holy pilgrims and hermits, the opposite panels provide secular portraits of just judges and holy knights on horseback. I believe these two panels were designed to acknowledge the patrilineal and matrilineal lines of Jose, the son of Philip the Good and Isabel of Portugal. The just judges are prior Dukes of Burgundy and Counts of Flanders, but they include Philip the Good in black, who rides beside his father, John the Fearless. The panel of the Holy Knight contains portraits of secular figures distinctively similar to those in the Fountain of Life replicas I have identified as the Portuguese heroes who fought at Suta. In the foreground is Duarte in green dagged Hoopalond as St. Martin. In the middle is Prince Pedro as St. George. And next to him is Enrique as St. Sebastian. Duarte's residence in Lisbon was called the St. Martin's Palace, and he wears the green color associated with the Avis crown. Prince Pedro traveled to England circa 1425 and was made a knight of the English Order of the Garter, the Order of St. George. Prince Enrique fought bravely at Ceuta, but he was the only royal wounded. He was shot with an arrow, the emblem of St. Sebastian. All young princes knighted at Suta wear laurel coronas designating victory. Time does not permit an identification of the remaining historical figures, but the crowned background portrait possibly depicts Juan I. His physiognomy compares favorably when reversed with an extant portrait of the sovereign in Lisbon. Perhaps the conversing figure in a dramatic blue chaperone an ermine cuffed black robe is Alfonso Count of Barcelos, who directed troops at Ceuta. Alfonso was the son-in-law of Nuno Alvarez Perea, King Juan I's closest confidant. The wealthy constable of Portugal not only had equated the Avis royal princes with the valorous knights of King Arthur, but he also selected Galahad as his alter ego while fighting by the monarch's side at Ceuta. In 1432, when Jan van Eyck was completing his Ghent altarpiece, Prince Enrique the Navigator, who had been charged with supervision of the garrison at Ceuta, proposed to King Juan I that he lead a second expeditionary force to North Africa with the ostensible purpose of capturing Tangier and the coastal towns of Gassar el Sahir and Asila. Plans for the project were set aside following the monarch's death in 1433 and succession of Duarte, but Enrique continued to advocate a campaign to North Africa. Support for the venture divided the Portuguese royal house. They had a dysfunctional family in a way. Enrique was backed by his brother, Prince Fernando, King Juan's youngest son and the master of the chivalric order of Avis. Fernando had yet to prove his mettle, prowess, and valor in a noble clash of arms. Enrique also received the espousal of King Duarte's wife, Queen Leonor of Aragon. However, staunch adversaries against the project were Prince Pedro and his half-brother Afonso. Another dissenter was Prince Juan, Duke of Beja, largely because of his 1424 marriage to Alfonso of Barcelos' daughter, Isabella Berganza. What tipped the balance in favor of Enrique's expedition was the promise of the bachelor to leave his title and estates to Prince Fernando. Upon Enrique's revision of his last testament in March of 1436, King Duarte ordered preparations for an armada. 
The campaign against the Marinid Sultanate of Morocco was a disaster. According to the court chronicler, Rue de Pena, about 3,000 knights, 2,000 infantrymen, and 1,000 archers set sail from Belim for Ceuta on August 22, 1437, after a solemn mass and ceremony on August 17 at the Cathedral of Lisbon, where Enrique received King Duarte's standard. The Armada arrived at Ceuta on August 27, where Enrique was greeted by the garrison commander, Don Pedro de Menezes, Count of Villarreal. While there was a muster of troops to determine commanding role, roles, Enrique decided not to wait for the carracks left behind, which were transporting additional men. The Portuguese siege did not surprise the Moroccans, as had been the case at Ceuta in 1415. Zakaria Yala Alwatasi, huh, called Lazarique by the Portuguese, who served as vizier to the young Marinid Sultan of Fez, Abd al Haq II, sealed the mountain passes around Ceuta and managed to call 100,000 men to battle. When scouts found strong resistance along the coast to Qasar el Seguir, Prince Enrique decided to split the Portuguese army into two. One contingent would travel by ship, led by Prince Ferdinand, while the majority of the infantry would march under, under Enrique to Tangier. On September 13th, the Portuguese arrived at Tangier, which then ironically was under governorship of the same administrator who had relinquished Ceuta in 1415, Sala ibn Sala. The Portuguese spent a week constructing a wooden palisade to protect their camp and then attacked in three assaults on September 20th, October 5th, and October 9th. In the final confrontation, the most elite Portuguese knights were killed or overwhelmed by a Marinid army comprising 10,000 horsemen and 90,000 infantry. The vizier Lazarique had mustered a formidable united force of men from the regional governors of Morocco. The Portuguese retreated to their palisaded camp, having lost about 4,000 of their original 7,000 army. On October 12th, the chronicler Rue de Pena reported Vizier Lazarique offered a truce and peace in exchange for Ceuta. A treaty was signed on October 16, 1437, between Prince Enrique and Sala ibn Sala. The Portuguese were to sail for home with only the clothes on their backs, and Ceuta was relinquished. As security for safe evacuation, Salah ibn Salah relinquished his own son to the Portuguese, and Enrique turned over four of his noblemen, as well as his own brother Fernando, who was to remain in Morocco until Ceuta was delivered, along with his personal servants and confessor, Fry João Alvarez. When news of the Tangier disaster reached Portugal, both Prince Pedro and Prince Juan attempted to raise troops and assemble a fleet to rescue their brother Fernando. King Duarte was indecisive about relinquishing Ceuta, where Enrique actually had remained in a bout of depression. On January 25, 1438, the Portuguese courts assembled at Liria Palace to consult but reached no conclusions. Enrique did not return home from Ceuta until June of 1438, and then he met with his brother, King Duarte, at Evora. There a decision was reached to retain Ceuta at all cost, although the siblings continued to scheme about how to secure the release of their brother, Fernando. In August of 1438, King Duarte died from plague, and his heir, Alfonso V, was only six years old. Subsequently, Prince Pedro became regent in 1439. Not until April of 1441, however, was Fernando de Castro, the head of Prince Enrique's household, sent to Ceuta to negotiate. He was ordered to relieve the governor, Fernando de Noronha, from command and relinquish the garrison to the Marinids, thus securing the freedom of the August Prince. The Portuguese flotilla of 1,600 men bound for Morocco was attacked by Genoese pirates close to the Cape St. Vincent and Fernando de Castro was killed. When Prince Pedro received news in Lisbon, 
He dispatched the uh, aristocrat Alvaro de Castro to fulfill the mission. All becomes rather murky at this point as distrust on both sides resulted in a stalemate in the negotiations. Eventually, in late October, early November of 1441, the Nasrid Sultan of Granada, Muhammad IX, interceded and proposed Prince Fernando be released to Genoese merchants under his protection, while he would ensure Viziar Zarikaria uh, that all the Portuguese had abandoned Ceuta. While the Nasrid Sultan's offer was considered, plague in Morocco delayed a response. In fact, during this time, the Portuguese uh, aristocrats who were taken ta uh, hostage at Tangier and still imprisoned at Arsila died in prison in the outbreak. The offer uh, was rejected by the vizier, and Prince Fernando remained in chains. A rescue was attempt. Uh, uh, there was a rescue attempt in March of 1442, but the Portuguese dispatches from Queen Leonor were discovered in the robes of a Moroccan nobleman who befriended the prince, and he was executed summarily. The hapless royal prisoner Fernando was transferred from his spacious quarters at Asilla to a prison in Fez. There, according to his confessor chronicler, Fray João Alvarez, he was chained and tortured. Fernando died on June 5, 1443, at the age of only 41. Later, members of his retinue, including his confessor se uh, secretary, Fray uh, João Alvarez, were ransomed and shipped to Portugal. Although the reputation of Prince Enrique suffered from the 1437 campaign to North Africa, he encouraged popular devotion of his brother Fernando as a sainted prince, Infante Santo Fernando. In fact, Prince Fernando actually was beatified in 1470. That's the longest without illustrations I'm 